Yo, 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 what's up, what's up? Today we're gonna be doing our late night crypto news update for October 6th leading to October 7th. Uh, we had some crazy news over the past couple of hours. Supposedly Bitcoin, or sorry, Instagram wants to suspend accounts talking about Bitcoin. That's a big problem because I talk about Bitcoin. So, uh, so yeah, let's unpack uh, everything that happened October 6th and let's get ready for October 7th. Like always, this is going to be a video explaining the biggest updates and trends in the crypto space to keep you up to date, save you time from reading these articles yourself and wasting time doing it yourself. Now, not only do we not go over all the ones, we just go over the ones that affect your portfolio and affect your position in the crypto market. All right, so first of a little bit of Bitcoin news. BitMEX co-founder and Macaranos Arthur Hayes predicts that Bitcoin is going to reach... 750,000 to $1 million level by the 2026 time frame, saying it's going to be the biggest bull market or large bull market in financial assets we've ever seen in human history. Uh, I agree. Uh, we have the Bitcoin ETFs coming out, right? We have people saying that or, or normally saying that when these ETFs come out, all these companies come out to avoid like a first mover advantage or to, to, to avoid giving a, another company an advantage. Uh, they would approve all the ETFs at like once. It would, they wouldn't just like cascade approval. So usually when we'll see these Bitcoin ETFs get approved, we'll see all of them get approved, uh, which is really good for the market and will really uh, uh, push up the price of Bitcoin. We will see a, a Bitcoin spike that day. Uh, I actually did break this down earlier today on my TikTok. If you want to get faster news because YouTube takes time uploading things and editing and all that stuff, I do make six TikToks a day breaking down the uh, crypto space. So yeah. Who's buying Bitcoin? We got the uh, Bitcoin halving happening next year around April uh, 2024. Uh, that that thing coupled with um, uh, the big uh, the Bitcoin ETF as well as uh, what we saw what happened in the previous timelines with the gold ETF uh, just shows how Bitcoin could be breaking all time highs to 200 even 300k. Now I don't know about 750k to 1 million. That does seem like something that would happen not the next bull run but the bull run after. I think maybe we could reach 250k. Uh, but it's not a uh, it's not surprising. A lot of analysts and a lot of um, people with influence and power are starting to get familiarized or are starting to familiarize the the media with Bitcoin and 1 million. Right? You're starting to see a lot more headlines of Bitcoin and 1 million, which is great because if they're expecting a Bitcoin, you know, to 1 million, that means we'll definitely hit 100k we'll definitely hit 200k so yeah that's the uh, bitcoin news for today let's move on Alrighty, so ftx sbf and the whole alameda thing going on so in case you don't know uh, sbf is currently his, his criminal um trials currently going on right now in the state of new york and, and there's a lot going on um this article is pretty much explaining all the eight billion dollar balances right what, what uh what certain people are saying against sbf and all the accounts and you know, essentially what happened to the money and, and all the users money and how you know it's how this whole thing um pretty much broke down uh alameda research and ftx co-founder gary wang testified uh, at length on friday detailing the special privileges that sam bigman freed secretly granted alameda research accounts on ftx uh wang testifies in november 22 ftx customer balances were equal to assets being held in hot wallets with one critical exception a hidden eight billion dollar liability known as fiat at I don't know why the accounts are named this, but I, I guess like they name the accounts a, a certain name at. But this one is, is Fiat at right now, and uh, and pretty much what we see is uh, Sammy Fried's um, lawyers are te you know questioning the heck out of this guy, and he's going over the whole situation of how uh, SBF took money from uh, the deposits of users to pay off lenders from Alameda and other people, and how their la her loans were getting like defaulted on, how they couldn't pay, and pretty much nobody knew how much money SBF had or anybody FTX really had. They had no idea how much money uh, were on their balance sheets or how much money they could use, and they kept allowing uh, the use of collateral such as FTT token, right, which is which is uh, FTX token. Uh, to put us collateral for these loans. And Wang even told SBF, hey, listen, I, I don't think this is going to be enough collateral for it. And, F and F SBF is like, no, 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 it's fine. And, and, and check this out. When Wang confronted Bankman Fried about the $8 billion hole, Bankman Fried simply acknowledged that the figure sounded correct with a neutral demeanor. Uh, $8 billion hole, yeah, it's a normal day. Um, according to Wang, the following day, after being informed of the whole, Bankman Fried tweeted, FTX is fine, assets are fine. Okay, so here, here's something you guys need to know. Whenever an exchange tweets stuff like this, and there's no sources, no facts, nothing to prove this, uh, assume something's wrong. Like, you don't just normally tweet this out, right? Unless there's problems, unless people are bringing stuff to light. Now, I'm sure there are people maybe at, at FTX bringing stuff up to light. Uh, or maybe there was some blockchain stuff that, that some snoopers were finding out. But uh, but yeah, whenever you see this, this is time to get your stuff off of exchanges. It, it, sometimes Binance will post like funds are, are safe and I'll actually like provide a report or something or explain the whole situation in length. And I actually do appreciate that. I think everyone in crypto appreciates that. But whenever you see this, exchanges are are are, are tricky. They're liars. They're, they're deceptive in the space. You shouldn't even be holding your crypto on exchanges, uh, honestly. 
you should always take your crypto off and put it on a hot wallets or like or um cold wallets that you uh you personally own that no one has access to uh because all the time accounts get banned issues happen they ask you to verify there's so many things that, like they're really not for you and they take fees off of you for trading so yeah ftx is fine assets are fine and then like four days later everything goes bankrupt that's uh it's not good another important thing to note is uh exchanges use everything they can right and they don't and it's funny they think they don't have to report it to us for example if they, they are able to control their own bank their own accounts right they're able to control the order books the order flows they can manipulate all of that and us as the traders are victims to it for example look at this alameda's accounts were also allowed to go negative without being subject to ftx auto liquidation procedure that was designed to close a customer's position before that customer could have lost of course alameda switched that feature off so guess what their accounts went negative, more negative than FTX's revenue, which means Alameda had to be borrowing FTX deposits. So because they made bad trades on their own exchange, right? Because these guys are the experts, right? These guys are the ones that created this empire and everything. Uh, not only did they lose their money, they're not losing your money that you deposited to put on that exchange. Crazy. And check this out, even more lies. Check this. It literally says the court was shown a tweet from Bankman Freed claiming that Alameda was treated the same as every other market maker on the exchange. However, that tweet was sent on the very same day Bankman Freed directed Wang to alter Alameda's privileges and the FTX code base, according to Wang's testimony, of course. They're all lying. You cannot trust any of these people. Do not trust an exchange. Everything they say is BS. Everything. I, I, I take everything with a grain of salt when it comes to space but yeah that's pretty much the whole ftx story um caroline ellison's supposedly going to be a witness next week and that she's soon to testify during this whole thing so if there's any big news updates from that i'll keep you guys informed right now as an ftx victim there's really nothing much you could do other than um uh, file a claim or reach out to um uh to some attorneys and figure out if you want to go your own route for that or just go the regular like unsecured creditors route i believe that's that's what happened with celsius right i didn't want to uh hire my own lawyers and do all that so I ended up going the unsecured creditor stuff, and they kind of handle all, all that stuff for you. Uh, do you are you going to get all your money back? No, no, right? You got to pay lawyers, you got to pay fees, you got to pay for all these structuring deals. And unfortunately, it's been a year now, and you guys are like, seems like it's just getting things moving now. So uh, I do feel sorry for that. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it going on right now. Um, there's going to keep having court, and the court resumes on Tuesday. Let's see if anything else. Uh, Bank Free lawyers, meanwhile, have really repeatedly tested the patience of the judge. So I guess they're getting the judge mad. Yeah, yeah, whatever. All right, doesn't matter. Next, uh, next week, we'll have more SBF trial news. All right, so here's some uh, good news. The European Securities and Market Authority, ESMA, uh, which I think is just the, the uh, European equivalent of the United States SEC, uh, just released their second consultative paper on the MICA mandates on October 5th. Supposedly, there was another paper before. Uh, and this paper pretty much outlined, it's a 307 page document that pretty much outlines uh, rules and regulations uh, for something called CASPs, which are crypto asset service providers in the European region. And it goes over things like sustainability indicators for distributed ledgers, uh, information disclosure, white papers, trade transparency, greenhouse admissions, consumption of energy, uh, blockchain nodes on. I guess, natural resources, and then even trade information, right? Like publication date and time, identification of the crypto asset, pricing information. It seems like the European uh, Securities and Markets Authority knows how to pass crypto regulation or at least get some stuff out there. And I'm actually in favor of that. I, you know, in fact, if the, if the United States SEC actually went ahead and did this first and tried to work this out and, and you know, let's just say they don't know what they're doing and went to the exchanges to figure this stuff out. I'm sure the exchange would comply. All the time you hear about uh, Coinbase's lawyer, Brian Armstrong, all the time on Twitter, trying to reach out to the SEC when they release certain products and stuff and all that. And then the SEC just responds and gives them a Wells notice and a, and a lawsuit. So uh, I, it's definitely good that uh, the European Securities and Markets Authority, or ESMA, is, is doing this. Definitely sets the standards, can allow more companies, a lot more uh, crypto fen uh, friendly people to want to operate in that area. And, and do business there because they're creating a, a thing for it. Yes, crypto is supposed to be anonymous or, or um, you know, script, use cryptography and be synonymous right, for certain blockchains. But if you are operating a, you know, an exchange or you are a crypto asset service provider, in order to protect people right, that don't know, they're probably novices or people that just want to get into crypto, you should have to file these stuff. You, know, you shouldn't be like FTX right, where you're able to lie and do all this stuff. You should have solid accounting, solid measures in place right, to, to at least not report to the people if, if that's private, but at least report to the, uh, the authorities. So that's the uh, European regulator news. 
Here's some beautiful news for all my XRP holders. Uh, SEC's motion to appeal loss and Ripple case is denied. Sorry, Gary Gensler. Uh, so yeah, federal judges rejected the United States SEC's commission bid to appeal its ground checking loss against Ripple, uh, right? The company associated with XRP. XRP did rally that day, right? We saw XRP explode all over Twitter and X. Uh, the judge, Annalise Torres, saying in a brief ruling that the SEC had failed to meet its burden under the law to show that there were controlling questions of the law and that there are substantial grounds for differences of opinion or appeal. Uh, of course, like um, like all lawsuits and stuff, it, that's not the end of it, right? The SEC is not just going to pack up their bags and say, oh, we, we lost, right? There's still other issues that need resolution. Uh, and apparently, they're able to actually appeal the entire case altogether after. But Ripple's winning, right? Another massive L for the SEC. Uh, a lot of people, like, they forget to realize that, uh, this, like, Ripple didn't just win and that's it and the SEC lost. Like, the, 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 they did win in the most important part, but they also did lose some other things. So when people say XP is not a security, it depends on who it was sold to. Um, the, in, in, the judge in July ruled that while Ripple violated federal securities law in selling XP to institutional investors, it had not done so by making XRP available to retail customers through pro programmatic sales to exchanges. So, yes, XRP is not a security, at, you know, as it's sold to you as the retail customer, but to institutional investors, it was. So they're still trying to figure that out, so, you know, figure out what fines have to be paid for that. How is that going to be dealt with? And everything uh but yeah another w for um ripple all right uh ripple's making updates and making partnerships all the time every single day um there's always news about brad garling house so whenever there's something big i will go ahead and cover it everyone is against the sec including elon musk uh so supposedly elon musk over uh twitter x was calling for an overhaul of the entire sec agency a comprehensive a comprehensive overhaul of regulatory agencies is really needed along with a commission to take punitive action against those individuals who have abused their regulatory power for personal and political gain can't wait for this to happen uh so supposedly uh on october 5th the us sec uh stated that it had applied for an order that will compel Musk to comply with an investigative subpoena and provide testimony uh which is now pretty much putting everyone in the crypto space behind elon Musk's back uh and supporting elon Musk's um ideas and notions towards the sec of totally reforming it uh, this whole entire article just pretty much goes over all the um, enemies of the SEC. Just so you guys realize, right? SEC has sued Coinbase. They have sued Binance. They're in a lawsuit with Grayscale, right? They've had the lawsuit we just talked about with Ripple and XRP. Um, even their own people, right? Like it says right here, Commissioners Hester Pierce and Mark Uyeta have frequently objected to agency decisions on crypto-related matters. And if you don't realize, right, have you seen those clips yet? Gary Gensler is absolutely getting ripped to shreds in Congress, okay? House Republicans Warren Davidson and Tom Ever introduced a bill to reform the SEC and remove Gary Gensler as chair and eliminate his position. A lot of people are hating on the SEC. A lot of people are hating on Gary Gensler. And they're the only people who are now stopping the Bitcoin ETF from becoming a thing. So there's a lot of tension. There's a lot of tension that built up right now between retail, between institutional, especially institutional crypto, and um, and the SEC right now. So it's it's it's, it's almost like um, everything's getting bottled up for a big explosion. And something's going to happen. Something big is, is definitely happening soon. We definitely can see that because uh, I don't know how long this could last. Um, of course, they're saying like 45, 60 days, we'll see something big happen, um, which is nothing in, you know, in Congress and all that. But, oh, well, we shall see. I personally do think the SEC um, will approve the Bitcoin ETF. In fact, they have to, despite um, Gary Gensler's evil notion to uh, destroy crypto. And that's all the uh, market news and updates for uh, October 6th leading to the 7th. It wasn't big. It wasn't a lot of stuff. Uh, if you want to get more trading details and more like technical analysis and stuff, make sure you follow me over on my Twitter X and uh, TikTok platforms. All day today, I was just going over uh, certain trades I was making, um, how to become a crypto millionaire one on one, right? How to find meme coins, how to follow whales, and how to track their um, their movements using tools like Zorion and other on chain data analytics and stuff and all that. I love that stuff. I'm a token hunter. Uh, so yeah, that was all the news for today. Um, I will have a video out tomorrow for tomorrow's news and everything you need to know. Just basic headlines going, you know, into the macro, macro economic, economical space. But yeah, that is all. Peace, peace, peace.